you've mentioned the article that you wrote recently, uh, which was a sort of a blueprint for the Welsh Labour leader, uh, as, you, as you see it. One of the things you mentioned there was a, a well-being state, which should guarantee not-for-profit, cheap, clean uh, energy, transport and broadband. How do you achieve those things? Well, firstly, we've got an economy which is dysfunctional across the UK and it's not working for ordinary people. So we need radical ideas to tackle that. Uh, if you look at what the basic necessities are of daily life now, some of the things that you've mentioned are on that list. They should be available at a minimal cost. We've got huge challenges in society, automation, Brexit, uh, austerity, household debt. All of these things are big challenges. And set against that, you've got a world of work which is less able to deliver uh, reliable income. So what can the state do? Well, it can provide or make sure that people can access those basic modern essentials at a minimal cost. Price. There's, there's, uh, that's the thing, there's access there now, the price is the problem. How do you guarantee cheap not-for-profit energy transport and broadband? How, how so, can you do that? So what we've got at the moment is market failure, if you like, in each of those areas. And the question then is what can the government do to step in to try and correct that and remove that hardship? And if you look at those things like getting to work, uh, applying for a job online, heating your home, if you can't do those things, those cause hardship. Actually, we should be seeing those in a way as kinds of public services. But, you know. but how can you make sure that they're cheap? How, that's what I'm asking is how could you guarantee, is what you're saying in your article, that it's cheap? So my proposal is a public provider in each of those areas who would deliver on a not-for-profit basis and in a way where people all over Wales could have a stake in that provider focused on delivering low-cost services in each of those and actually in parts of Wales some of those services aren't really available and so plugging those gaps as well it's that sort of idea that I think we should be discuss discussing and debating now and it's pretty radical and there'll be people who oppose that and I think that's fine let's have that sort of debate and um, one of the other things that you say is that it should be a universal right to lifelong learning uh, a laudable aim but what we've seen from a Welsh government is, is cuts to lifelong learning time and time again for a number of years. I mean, isn't there a danger here that what, as, as you're looking to the future, <coughs> you're sort of glossing over the failures of the past? Uh, well, I want to look forward. The, the point is, the, uh, I've made it really clear in that piece, for example, what we are facing now is new kinds of pressures, quite honestly, and the, the sorts of things I was talking about a minute ago. Each one of those is a very significant change for us. Together, it's really very dramatic, and so we need to perhaps approach things in a different way facing those sorts of challenges in future than we have done perhaps in the past. But, but it, sorry, the, the difficulty I, I guess for a party that wants to rejuvenate and, and, and think of new ideas while staying in government is that you have to accept that something has maybe gone wrong. And I was just thinking, I interviewed with Carwin Jones a couple of weeks ago, he said he hadn't done anything wrong, no regrets, in eight years as leader. Can you really move on unless you at least admit that there have been some issues which you haven't quite got right as a Labour government? Well, look, I've joined the government recently. I've not come on here to tell you a list of things that I think we could have done better in the, in the past, Edwin. What I'm trying to do is look forward to a period after this Assembly and, after, uh, and to the future leadership of the party and look at what challenges we face at that time and how we respond radically uh, to those challenges. And I'm putting some of those ideas on the table. As I say, some of them are based on experiences of the past, clearly. But some of them are also based on a different kind of challenge. You mentioned the universal right to lifelong learning, for example. We have workplaces all over Wales, all over the UK, which are being transformed in good ways and bad ways by technology. Now, it's the job of the state to look at the ways we can support people through that and looking at different so, jobs doing, well, during then. their life. Well, for that sort of thing, you would want to be, have in place an ability to, for people to retrain, become more digitally equipped uh, and uh, improve their digital skills at different points in life, to kind of reboot their career, if you like. Um, and I think there are different ways of doing that. The key point is to regard it as a sort of universal right that people can access across the board. We do really well in supporting uh, people who go to university and we do really well in supporting people who want apprenticeships. And what we also need to look at is across the board a sense of an entitlement that people can but, always access yeah, that opportunity. These things, these things strike me as things that are, again, laudable but probably expensive. And how do you get round the problems of the, you know, the suggestions that you're making and the constriction in public uh, spending? Yes. Well, if you look, for example, at the, um, the well-being state that we were talking about a minute ago, uh, there are all kinds of proposals about how you could establish an energy uh, provider uh, across Wales to deliver 
that sort of service. There are examples in local government, for example, in Nottingham and in Liverpool Labour Control Councils, which we can learn from. And there are cost studies that you can look into there. Clearly, it requires upfront investment, but with those sorts of things, the ambition would be that over time, that actually saves you money. But, but that then, modelling needs to be sure. done. I'm not okay. coming here with no, a that, fully costed but, idea. But something, but else, something else that, that strikes me as, as a practical answer to something. You, you mentioned the challenges of, of an ageing society in your article. Yeah. Well, one thing that we've seen talked about is, is a social care levy. So with the new powers the Welsh Government has, it's a pot of money just for social care, but it would be you know, an extra tax, essentially. Is that the kind of thing the party needs to be looking I at think seriously? That, I think that sort of thing is really quite an exciting idea, to be honest. And actually, that's a quite a good example of the sort of thing that I'm talking about. In Wales, we have an ageing population, and actually that is a good thing. It's too often talked about as a challenge, by the way. It's a good thing. It's an asset in very many ways for us. So we should be able, shouldn't we, to look at new ways of supporting that stable ageing population. And we should be able to, as we have in the past with the health service, come up with ideas for delivering that sort of service But also, just finally, that the, the, the taxes, the tax powers you'll have should be used to increase taxes to provide better services. As a principle, you'd be in favour of that then? We're talking about the social, a sort of social care levy is what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but it's a, it's a, it's a tax, isn't and it? That yeah, no, sure, absolutely. And that needs to be worked through, but it's the sort of principle we could and should be looking at. And there's work, by the way, ongoing around that, as, as you know. But actually, the challenges of social care go beyond that. We could also be looking in the future ambitiously at what uh, you know, local authority pension funds invest in. There's all sorts of creative discussions going on out uh, in Wales on those sorts of issues. And actually, bringing those into the debates uh, that we have within the party would be a really good thing. Some of them are already on the table, but there's room for, for more ideas always. There we are, and hopefully we'll get you on over the next few months to discuss it again. But for now, Jeremy Miles, thank you very much for your time.